Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. So what I thought I'd do today is to do a bit of a tutorial on programming the Powered Up Hub system uh, that's been provided with all the uh, Powered Up uh, latest Technic sets. And of course Powered Up has taken over from the uh, original Power Functions that came with LEGO Technic. And the great thing about the Power Functions was that it was actually very simple. It just had a infrared remote. You could uh, remotely turn on a motor stop it or go in reverse and pretty much all full power came with several channels so you can control more than one motor at a time and with the powered up uh, hub system uh, the big difference is, is that the powered up hub is a bluetooth enabled device and that can connect to a smart device such as an ipad or iphone or a samsung tablet like i've got here and the big benefit of the powered up system is that through the powered up uh, application you can uh, you've got a lot of programming flexibility over your motor uh, so like i said with power functions it's pretty much full power or no power and what you can do with powered up is actually change the amount of power you apply to the motor and therefore you can control the speed very accurately and not only the speed we can also set the position and the other big benefit as well is that not only can you set that speed and position but you can also measure it so at any point in time you can measure the speed of your motor and also the position of the axle and by having that kind of programming flexibility you can add a lot more functionality to your designs and models and that is one of the uh, like I say the big benefits of the powered up uh, hub system so what I thought I'd do today is just um, walk you through some of, uh, some of the basic functionality of the powered up hub um, program and I'm kind of assuming you haven't done any powered up programming before so I'll keep it at a fairly basic level so yes, yeah, so keep watching and uh, hopefully you'll learn something that you'll find useful. Okay, so what you need to get started is a powered up hub like one of these. And these of course are available in any of the powered up LEGO Technic sets. What you'll need as well is a powered up motor like one of these. Now the one I've got here is an extra large motor, but any of the powered up motors will work fine. And of course the powered up motors have got the uh, new type of connection uh, compared to the power functions connection and first thing you need to do is connect that uh, motor to one of the hub ports so you'll notice on the hub there's four different input ports a b c and d and in this case i'm going to plug it into port a now of course the port letter is very important for the programming because you need to match the letter to your program to make sure that uh, the application is controlling the motor that you want to control now the other most important thing that you need is of course is a smart device you've, uh, if you do have a powered up um, Technic set then of course you've probably already got one of those uh, in order to be able to control that set uh, so in this case here I've got a Samsung Galaxy tablet uh, the uh, powered up app is also supported on the iPad or iPhone so first thing you need to do of course is install the application you can find it in the Play Store or the Apple Store and once you've installed it you'll get this icon on your screen there okay so in order to get started simply click the icon to start the powered up app and it'll start off with a bit of a lego splash screen like this powered up and then it'll go to a screen that's got a number of built-in controllers for some of the lego sets like this one uh, for playing with those sets but what you want to do is push create in order to create your own uh, programming project uh, you give it a name so in this case it just comes up with a bit of a random starting name i will call it demo and then go to the next screen you want to what you want to choose is coding so we'll pick coding and that will bring up the coding screen now the first thing you will do is connect your bluetooth um, hub so what you need to do is push this button up here looking for the bluetooth and you push that green button in order to connect and that will connect your uh, hub to the smart device and there we go it's been connected so that's great all right, so the programming interface is pretty much a drag and drop type interface. Uh, you've got these different icons along the bottom and each of these icons implement a different type of function. So for example, this one here is a start function that will start a program sequence. Uh, you've got these different tabs that have got different icons for different types of functionality. So for example, all the yellow ones are flow control green ones which I use a lot is the motor control so these ones allow you to turn motors on turn them off and set different angles there's quite a few different options uh, another one I use a lot is the blue tab so the blue tabs are the user interface button control so you can react to buttons being pushed or switches being switched and also have an output display of for example the motor angle or motor speed 
So coming back to the general programming, like I say, it's a drag and drop kind of interface. So um, you need to understand what each of these icons does. They're all got similar kind of looking icons, for example. Uh, so it is important to understand the subtle differences between them. Uh, but I'll show you some of the different uh, basic ones. So for example, this is a delay. And all we do is just attach it to uh, your start um, icon. And essentially what you're creating is a flow control from left to right. So for example, this particular icon is a delay icon. You can see by the hourglass. And you can change the delay to a certain number of seconds. In this case, it's already preset to one. But for example, you can change it to one and a half or any value that you prefer. And then, for example, you can add to that a controller uh, icon for the motors and turn a motor on. So this particular icon here is a turn on icon. Now, like I said, they, they all kind of look a little bit similar. Uh, you have to get familiar with what each uh, icon does for each motor. There is a very good resource uh, on the web that I'll point to you later. But uh, this particular one will turn a motor on to a certain power level. So you've got two input functions. One is which particular motor you want to turn on, that, so that's the port on the on the hub, so in this case it's port A, which is what I've got my motor connected to, and the other value in this case is the power, so the power value is just simply between 0 and 100, so obviously 0 applies no power, 100 is maximum power, and uh, something like 80 would be 80%. So this is a very simple program, so what this does when I start running this program, which I can do by pushing the start button at the top right, it will start, it will delay, and wait for one and a half seconds, and then turn on motor A. So I'll just give you a quick demo. Boom, wait one and a half seconds, and then motor A turns on at 80%. Uh, so yes, that is about the simplest program as you can get. It's just a simple motor turn on. You can stop your program by pushing stop. Okay, now the problem with this particular program is that you need to push the overall program start button in order to start that motor and get that program running. Now what ideally you'd like is some sort of interface where you've got a button you can push in order to start your motor and the way you do that is to go to the user interface uh, designer and what this allows you to do is add different widgets to control uh, and create different buttons. So we push add widget and that allows you to select between many different types of widgets. The main types are simply uh, start buttons, uh, directional controllers and you've got uh, output displays. So we just start with a start button, so you just simply select the button then add that widget to your screen and that will create that button on your user interface screen and as you can see each button has got a particular little number on there and this is number zero and that uh, relates to the uh, ID of that button. So you need to remember which button has got which ID uh, within your programming interface. So We'll just go back to the program interface and what we need to do is change the type of start uh, flow control. This one always starts whenever you push the start button and what we want is one that starts when a button is pushed. You need to use this one and you can see it's got this very small uh, triangle wedge there and that relies on a particular condition. In this case it has not yet been filled in yet and what we can do is select from the blue tab one of these icons here which as you can see has got the wee triangle at the top which fits exactly into here and what this is saying, this icon is saying if that button is pushed it will relay that to this block here and will start the sequence so in this case here we've got that number zero there and that relates to the button ID so remember the button that I put on there before was button zero so that is exactly the one we want so we'll keep that at zero and what this will do is that, is that when button zero is triggered, that will then trigger the start control flow. It will then delay one half second and turn on the motor. So by going back to our control interface, here it is, we can now run this and push the button. By pushing that button, that will start that flow control, wait for one and a half seconds and turn on the motor. Now of course, I haven't got a, a controller to turn off yet, so once I've got this program going, I've got no way of turning the motor off. So what I need to do it's just break that interface and add another button, for example the red button add that widget, maybe you can drag and drop put underneath that will be our stop button, we then go back to our programming and what we can do is create a stop uh, loop or stop uh, interface, so what we do, we add another start button we make that dependent on an input in this case our input will be button 1, so that we've got to change that to 1. Then what we'll do, we'll use the uh, motor stop icon, so this one here will stop the motor, and again it's motor A that we're stopping. 
it's only got one option with simply with stopping it we're not uh, setting any other values and this particular program here then has got two flow controls one will be triggered uh, to turn the motor on and one is triggered to turn the motor off so if I then run this program go to our interface here we go so we can push on wait one and a half seconds it will turn on I can then push stop and that will turn the motor off and all that particular stop does you can see how there is a delay uh, in the stopping because that particular stop icon just turns the power off and it's still got momentum and the motor will keep uh, still turning a little bit uh, for a little while afterwards while that momentum dissipates. Okay so the next thing I wanted to show you is how to display the angle of the axle on the screen so internally within the motor within the hub it tracks the current axle angle and that's measured in degrees you can use that value in your uh, design uh, maybe for some sort of feedback uh, as to the position the angle might relate to a uh, position of a particular part of your model so the way you can first of all see that on the screen is by going to your widget editor we push that one we go to the dial options and that uh, dial can display uh, different values so it all pretty much do the same thing so I might pick for example a green one add that to my user interface I can drag and drop it to where I like it to sit. Uh, you've got to note the uh, ID of that particular widget, in this case is number two um, and that's important for the programming so we'll go to our program and what we need is a special block that is available on the blue tabs and it's this particular dial uh, uh, control and that has got two inputs and what this does is it'll take the value that you put on the right and display it on the dial that is related to widget that is given by this value on the left. So in this case we're using widget number two, so we need to change that to number two and we need to give it a value that we want to display and at the moment it's just got a fixed value of zero. Of course we don't want that, we want that to be related to the motor so we go to the motor widgets and here you can see these two small widgets here which allow you to either measure the speed of the motor or the angle. So in this particular case I like to see the angle of the motor I can add that to here and again I can change the motor letter uh, which in my case is uh, motor A so I can just leave that the way it is. Now think about this particular widget, it's pretty much a one-off widget so it will run through there and display that value. If you wanted to continuously keep updating what we need is a looping control so we go back to our flow control options and there are a number of uh, controllers that do the looping and the one I need is this one over here, this does continuous looping. So once that gets started it will just keep looping, keep measuring the value of angle of motor A and display it on widget 2. Now of course something that's missing is the start um, control flow um, widget. So there we go, add that there. And that completes the programming to display motor A angle on widget 2. So once I play that and go to here we can now see we're at angle 1. So if I rotate that around we can see that angle changing, I can turn it back and the angle goes back down again uh, it can go negative, it can go positive, so uh, it's measured in degrees, so if I go right around it should be around 360 there we go, and if I actually start the motor it will just start counting upwards and in fact it uh, doesn't keep the absolute angle, it's actually a cumulative angle so for example that's important if you want to rotate uh, the axle a number of times, you can actually count how many times it went round just from uh, the angle that you've measured. So if you divide that by 360 that means it's rotated around that many times. Now one obvious drawback of this angle measurement is in fact that it's a cumulative uh, relative measurement, so that means it's the relative movement of the axle to the uh, start point of when you first started up the hub or the motor. So what I mean by that is if you, for example, unplug the motor and plug it back in, so I'll just unplug it, plug it back in, you'll now see that the value that it's measuring within the motor angle has actually been reset to zero. So uh, in fact it's got no bearing to the actual physical location of the motor. Uh, so what you need to do is have some sort of way of resetting that measurement so that you know uh, what the actual angle is and that's why normally uh, all of the powered up sets in the, uh, that you can buy will have a calibration phase and what that does is it will rotate the motor to a certain known limit once it hits that limit uh, you know due to your model maybe reaching you know a limitation on how far something can move uh, it will then know the angle and it can reset that value the internal value so that within the programming it knows what the actual physical angle is and that it matches the internal angle. 
So I'll just show you how to do that uh, with the program. So what we need to do is add another widget. So for example, we might add a pink calibration button or a well, reset button in this case. It's widget number three. We go back to our programming and what we do, we have a start button that's conditional on pushing a particular widget. So in this case, a particular button. It's button number three. There we go. And then what we do then is we go to one of the special motor functions and there is one over here, this particular control block. And what that does, it resets the internal angle of that motor. In this case, it's motor A and we're resetting it to angle zero. Now we can choose any angle we like. So for example, we might use 90 if you physically put it into a 90 degree position. And then when we run our code, uh, it's currently at 233. If I then, for example, yeah, like I say, set that to 90 and then push this button here, it will reset the internal value to 90. And now I can kind of move that around and I get the correct relative position. So if I move down to the bottom there, it's showing 180 or 179. If for some reason, you know, it gets uh, uncalibrated, I can just simply you know, reset it again uh, to the angle that I want. So if I want 90, push that back at 90. Now, of course, normally you wouldn't have a push button to reset it. You have some sort of calibration uh, code block functionality that will run through, limit the motor to a particular angle that is known, and then reset the internal value. And then from there on in, you can set the motor to a particular angle and know that it's in the correct angle relative to where you wanted it to be. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you is how to set the relative angle of the motor. Um, at the moment, we'll just be measuring the angle. Now we're going to actually set the angle. So again, the way we do that, we can add another button, maybe a gray button. Add that uh, down here. So that's button number four. What we're going to do is go to our programming interface, have a start button. That start button will react to uh, widget number four. So change that number to four. And then I'm going to choose a special motor angle setting uh, control widget and that is either this one or this one. Now these are subtly different, they look the same but in that wee corner it has got a slight difference. This one is a relative angle that will add that much angle to the current position and this is an absolute angle that will take the motor to the angle you've specified relative to that measurement that's on the dial. So I'll start with the relative measurement first or the uh, relative setting. So in this case it's motor A, uh, this middle option here is the speed at which it moves. Just keep that at 50 and this is the incremental angle. So for example, I might choose 90 degrees, so that will do 90 degree steps. So if I try that, if I push this button, it will move 90 degrees. So each time I push it, it will add 90 degrees to the angle. So that's very useful, for example, for uh, switching a gears in a motor controller or in a gearbox. For example, using the orange rotary catch, uh, 90 degree angles give you that uh, angle that you need for the next gear. The other option is to use um, a absolute angle. So again, add another widget, maybe a black button, button number five. Uh, we're going to go back to our controller. We're going to add a start widget for button number five so that will react to number five change that to that and this time we'll choose the other option which is the absolute position so for example we might choose angle 180 so that will always take the motor back to position 180 so again we run that we're currently in position 1085 so obviously the motor's rotated number of full circles and if we push the black button it will take us back to 180. There we are, we're at 180 and again we can do those 90 degree steps and then take us back to 180. So this is an example of how you can change the angle of your motor or set the angle of the motor either relatively or absolutely. Alright so that finishes today's tutorial so just uh, briefly what I've covered is how to start a motor with a delay to stop that motor to recalibrate the angle uh, by changing the internal measurement of the angle to do relative steps of the motor and to do absolute positions. Now if you do want to uh, study more of the detail of some of these uh, code blocks that are available there's a fantastic resource on uh, the website racingbrick.com fantastic explanations of a lot of these different control options like I said they are subtly different and it is important to know the difference between them in order to be able to write the best program so hope you enjoyed this tutorial please like and subscribe and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time